On your knees. Okay, chop it off. Chop it off. Let's do it. Oh, we got him now. You know what? I'm thinking there are probably sharper stairs somewhere else. We're thieves, but we help the wrong person steal the wrong thing and unleash the greatest evil the world has ever known. The Red Wizards created an army of the undead. Sounds lovely. Quite the opposite. I know, I was being ironic. I find irony is a blade that cuts he who wields it most especially. You're not a lot of fun, are you? How are we gonna pull this off? We're gonna need a team. Follow me to the orifice. The orifice? I'll go last. Let's go! I don't mind that. She missed. No, oh, that's not good. Aren't you sick of failing? We can die. There's worse things than dying. I lost everything that ever mattered to me. And if we quit now, that's for nothing. I don't want to see you die, which is why I'm going to leave the room. This ends now. The bridge is protected by an ancient trap. We must not trigger the mechanism. I may have triggered the mechanism. So, sorry. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Ready Speaker. I'm your host, Ron LaRucci. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Film Review. What we're doing today is Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. I just showed you the trailer. You can sort of see if you like it. It's a really long ass trailer that came out. Usually that's a bad sign. So is it a bad sign? Well, let's go over some of the details first, then we'll get it. we will get into the story. So the movie is directed by John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein. Writers are Jonathan Goldstein, John Francis Daly, Michael Gilio, and it stars Chris Pine as Edgin. Michelle Rodriguez as Holga, Renee Jean Page as, I guess, Zank, Zank, Justin Smith as Simon, Hugh Grant as Forge, Sophia Lillis as Doric, Chloe Coleman as Kira, and Daisy Head as Sophina. I guess that's the uh, main characters in this film. So, how do you feel about it? Well, you watch the, you watch the uh, trailer. It's trying to be something. Uh, from the trailer, it feels like it's trying to be another Guardians of the Galaxy. And from the content, it's trying to be Lord of the Rings. And from the acting, it's trying to be Star Trek. I don't think this movie knows what it is. Chris Pine is doing Chris Pine. And that is his you know, anchor character is, is Captain Kirk, the new Captain Kirk. This feels a lot like his second movie in the Star Trek franchise. The humor is sort of there. It's, I, I don't know about the chemistry of all the characters. Uh, you have Michelle Rodriguez who plays his Spock sort of type. But, but again, it's very much like Guardians of the Galaxy. It could be, you know, uh, Drax. It could be the Drax character. You have Justin Smith as Simon, which is a wizard. So here's the premise of the story. Actually, I, I stopped there. Oh, and let's see how long it is. It is two hours and 14 minutes. It's not worth two hours and 14 minutes worth of time. It took a long time to, to, to view this. So I, I got one of those early, early rentals and it took me three sit downs before it expired to really watch the whole thing. So Chris Pine is a thief. He's an honorable thief. So he stole and helped wizard, evil wizards, wizards, the red wizards, and well, it felt poor doing the good for the people and ended up stealing from them. And they found him, killed his wife, and then he, he befriended some other guy who was played by Hugh Grant. Does a great job, I think, of being Hugh Grant. Not really much else, but he is just Hugh Grant. 
which he's been doing a lot lately, which is great. It's a resurgence of his career. I like it. He keeps working. He's a pleasant character. Why not put him in movies? Uh, maybe this was written for him in mind. I'm not sure. I'm not looking at any of the notes or the reviews of this film. And the Hugh Grant character sort of sets him up and then takes his daughter, who uh, was played by... Uh, she's in a lot of movies right now. So that's Chloe, uh, Chloe Coleman. And and he grows her, raises her to, to be his own, and he becomes filthy rich while Chris Pine is in jail. And there's this, you know, gothic sort of a prison with uh, griffins and other other types of characters. And he escapes, and he goes to his daughter, and he finds out that he was tricked, and they killed his wife, and he's really sad about everything. He wants to get a spell to resurrect, resurrect his wife, so he gathers some you know, odd lot of people, uh, a la Ocean's Eleven, and it has that kind of feel too. He's trying to be that witty, contemporary rhythm speaker in that film, in this film, and he's trying to pull some of George Clooney in there, which he could do a bio of George Clooney. He has the hair for it. Uh, not that George Clooney's gone, but if anybody doesn't do a bio of him, I think Chris Pine could probably do the bio, biopic for him. And or if George Clooney and Matt Damon had a love child, I think. He would be Chris Pine. Just throwing it out there. Just think of those two. Yeah. Cabo. Just saying. So So that's where it, that's where it goes. And he's fighting wizards and there's, there's magic and all those stuff. There's so they have I mean it's a it's a weird film. It's a weird film. There's a lot of little things that I don't like about it. And and there's all there's a lot of references in in it I don't get. They're probably game based. I, I never really played the game or the card game or any game that's that's related to it. So I'm not not really sure where it all lands. I, I like mythology and mythical creatures I always have as a kid. So I used to read a lot of stuff about that and dragons and and elves and uh, the, the red hat sort of creatures. That There's a movie laying around that I want to see, but the star is uncomfortable, so I have to get past that. And But this movie just never takes off. The CGI is, is poorly done. The dialogue is, is really not well well well, well written. The, there's a supposed to be a love interest story between the Simon character and Doric. Uh, so that's uh, Justin Smith and Sophia L Lillis. And I, I don't really... It, it doesn't pay for me. It does, there's no payoff for that. I don't feel that there's an attraction. I feel there's narration from Simon, but I don't think it's really... goes Or it's not set up. It's just not set up to, to go back and forth. It doesn't feel organic or real. The Holger character seems kind of dumb. Uh, there's a, a brutish but not in a funny way so definitely being like a Drax but without the intended jokes the trailer you saw had that bit that heavy 70s rock or whatever rock I forgot even what song it was but that, that, that rock like power rock you know thump to it which is definitely Guardians of the Galaxy so maybe they were recutting the the trailer to sort of entice people to take a chance on this film to get that sort of feel Chris Pine is playing He's trying to play Quill. He's also trying to play Deadpool. He's uh, he's trying to play Kirk. I think it's more Kirk than anything. But there's elements of those other characters in it, and and, and it's problematic. And 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 definitely the CGI is is off. You can see there's reshoots in it too, because if you look at his hair, there's points where it looks different, and not lengthwise, but actually the texture wise. And you know, God bless TVs that that are, that are 4K, but the texture the texture of it is wrong. And I'm like, oh, they're reshoots because they probably had to re refigure out a scene or it didn't work and, and they wanted to chase up on it and, and get it locked in. It's just not that good. I think the best makeup is the, the witch who plays... Is that Sophina? I think that's Sophina. Uh, the best makeup is when she... And you see in the trailer right at the end, the very dark makeup. That's to me, is the best makeup I, I saw in the film. It, it felt really, really organic and it was dark and macabre, but I felt that was real. Up until that point, I didn't really see it... And, and, and this, again, going back to the story, it doesn't really track well. So he's he's been duped by the, the Forge character, and the Forge character is being duped by the witch, who ends up wanting to kill the people But in, in this this little, you know, uh, kingdom. It's really just one little kingdom there. And everybody's by the castle, and the uh, Forge gets everybody in the castle, and there's a plot to kill everybody in the city because they're horrible people. And and then the guard, the new, these guardians go back to save them, and... The thing that is that they before that they were fighting in an arena to their deaths and the, the population was cheering for them to die and saw a whole bunch of people die and they came back to save those people which doesn't read well. So you know I, I get I get the aristocracy sort of getting in the middle of that and, and you get to see hey this guy died that guy died wow that's cool cool blood 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 but when you're saving the people who wished you were dead 
10 minutes before and just wish that anybody was dead. Actually, it didn't matter. It's kind of like a weird, weird message you know, with, with this film. And they have like walkie talkies, they have like Star Trek walkie talkies in it. And that's how they communicate. So I guess it's some sort of magic stone, but it looks like he's in Star Trek because he's talking and like, hey, where are you? I'm downstairs. Where are you? I'm upstairs. And they do all these weird little things. And they have like magic suppressors in it, which again feels very much like a sci-fi futuristic element, not something that's that's said in some mythical land that's that's steampunk sort of. Uh, I, I don't know. I, the problem for me with these films, and just if you can, just take a moment to hear me out on this, is that they they rely on 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 a, on a prepackaged story and a and prepackaged fan base. Now you have movies like Dun, uh, Lord was it a uh, Game of Thrones that works because there's a lot of dialogue that works there, and and up until the last two seasons they were relying heavily on that book dialogue which was good dialogue and not for all of it but they were able to filter out anything that didn't work and use all the meaty good chunks and they were able to develop characters once that ended those two seasons kind of you know tanked because they couldn't really get the rhythm and the dialogue back because they didn't write it you have uh what is it uh uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. It's made up from a, a ride in, in Disney, but they they had writers who would write good dialogue for it, and it kind of worked. Especially the first one, I really I don't really remember. I mean, I watched the two and three, I think, but the first one was that was the point of it that it really worked. The rhythm worked. The dialogue worked. It worked in unison with the shots, and, and they understood it, and it kind of it kind of jived. This is lacking that, and that's what you see in a lot of these films that are uh, being taken off of products with a with a fan base that's already built in with no real story and no real dialogue if you let, unless you have somebody who's really good with that dialogue knows how they had it's going to happen knows how everything's going to look it never really pans out i think this is a film that doesn't pan out it just doesn't work in that way and that's probably why they, they they're unable to get the dialogue to match with what we're seeing and the sincerity of the characters between each other i just don't buy it so yeah, I could talk about this all night, how much I didn't like it, but but uh, feel free to watch it, I guess. You might like Chris Pine, you might like Michelle Rodriguez, you might like Hugh Grant. I mean, watch them for what they are. Uh, I think Hugh Grant did an admirable job. I just don't think there's chemistry with anybody else in it. I'm not really sure why you know they had to do this. Everybody wanted to get paid. It's a big film. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I doubt there's going to be a two, or if there is, it's going to go straight to video. I don't think there's any reason to get past this movie i think everyone's already forgotten about it that's a sad thing it just came out last month uh, no two months ago right march but it's uh it's, it's not a great movie so okay that's it sorry all right come uh subscribe like share come back to the show maybe you want to be on the show you know send me a message and we'll talk about it love to hear your views on this so leave leave a, a comment if you like and uh that's all i gotta say for today so bye this is ron larucci saying Goodbye, said it again, for Ready Speaker. Bye. Three times. Wow.